All right, what's up everyone? Today we've got some stuff to go over in the TWID that just dropped today. Normally they come out on Thursdays, but it is Thanksgiving tomorrow here in the US, so they are rightfully gonna take the day off tomorrow. And just an FYI, this video is just going to contain some standard gameplay here. I don't have enough time to put together a full production video here because this article is so massive with so much information that I just wanna get it out. It's more important that you just hear everything that's happening, all the new changes, so let's get into it. To start off, I mentioned this in a community post yesterday, but we've got a really cool Witcher collab coming next season. Unfortunately, this is just going to be a silver only cosmetic set. I originally thought that this might be available for Bright Dust at some point during the season, but I don't believe that's correct. This will most likely just be 2000 silver purchases per set. So that's like $20 per set. So if you want to spend $20 on an armor set, you can do that. It's pretty cool looking, but I would personally suggest actually getting some Destiny content so you can get some gear and weapons that are actually worthwhile and will do something for you. So with that out of the way, let's get into the seasonal artifact. Just like any other seasonal artifact, season 23's artifact, the Queen's Foil Sensor will have three damage type focuses, being Solar, Strand, and Stasis. Which, spoiler alert here, this is like almost all Solar and hardly any Strand and Stasis, but whatever. The artifact is going to also feature some very powerful perks, obviously, and also have a focus on rocket launchers, interesting, and some returning perks as well. So for column one, this is always going to contain our main anti-champion perks. We first got anti-barrier sidearm, unstoppable hand cannon, and unstoppable bow, and then overload auto rifle and overload pulse rifle. Overall, a solid set. Not sure if we've ever had unstoppable bow before, at least that I can remember. But in column two, we have flame fiber freeze, which will combine each of those siphon mods into one. This is going to allow you to generate orbs of power from multi kills from any of those damage type weapons. Nice. Kindling trigger sounds actually kind of busted in how you'll be able to scorch any enemy with solar weapons as long as you have radiant, which is super easy to do. Radiant as a focus is going to be a reoccurring theme in an the artifact just to let you know. Blast Radius will grant armor charge from rocket launcher and grenade launcher multi-kills. This one sounds pretty meh to me since it's so easy to get armor charge right now anyway. The Origin Perk Specialization 1 will improve the benefits of the Sundering, Nanomunitions, and Nanotech Tracer Rocket Origin Traits, which I think the Sundering Origin Trait is what I would assume to be either the new Dungeon Weapon Origin Trait or maybe the new Seasonal Weapon Origin Trait. We'll just have to wait and find out. Weapons with these Origin Traits will always be overcharged as well, so you always have a 25% damage bonus in any activity that has an overcharge modifier. From Whence You Came is a pretty niche perk, but it will get you boosted ability damage to Taken and Scorn enemies. We'll have to see what the damage bonus actually is. It might be worth it, but I'm not sure. If it's like 10%, I'm probably never gonna use it. Moving on to column three, we've got Flint Striker, which will grant Radiant when getting Solar Precision Hits and Solar Weapon Multi-Kills. This looks like a good perk overall that might be a replacement for Ember of Torches, which is a fragment that will get you Radiant on powered melee kills now, but you could also use them both together to just always have Radiant. Torch will get you increased weapon damage while you are Radiant and damaging either a Strand or Stasis debuffed enemy. Again, Radiant is just getting a lot of love in Season 23, my goodness. Heart of Flame, another Solar perk, will get your nearby allies Radiant when you're casting your Solar Super, and it will also boost the damage of that Solar Super for each ally that's nearby you. Origin perk Specialization 2 is the same thing as the first one but it's gonna boost Noble Deeds, Unsated Hunger, Head Rush, and the Dragon's Vengeance Origin Trait. Okay, so Dragon's Vengeance sounds really cool. Can't wait to see what this is. And yeah, both this and the Sundering Origin Trait are the two new ones next season. We will definitely cover them on the channel once I get some testing in, so stay tuned for that. Lots of videos coming once the new season starts. Wished Into Being seems like a very unique and creative perk, but at first glance, it really doesn't seem that good. Basically, as you get near to full super, your ability kills will spawn orbs of power, and wearing Season of the Wish armor will, I think, reduce the amount of total charge you need to fill up your super. That's how I'm reading it, but again, we'll have to test it. I'm not sure. For column four, we have one of my favorite perks back, Unraveling Orbs. Very simple, you just pick up an orb of power and your strand weapons get a nice buff with Unraveling Rounds. Pillar of Ice will spawn a stasis crystal when killing an encased combatant, which I believe encased just means frozen. Revitalizing Blast will weaken bosses and champions by just dealing damage with any solar ability. Next, we've got Overload Rocket Launcher, which I think is a first, could be cool. 
Dragon's Bite seems like a fun one. You get a chance to freeze or suspend an enemy when breaking their shield with a stasis or strand weapon. And if you wear Season of the Wish armor, it will actually increase that chance. So they are doing a lot more seasonal armor synergy this time, which is kind of nice. And finally, column five, let's see what we got. Horde Shuttle will spawn a strand threadling when dealing damage to any unraveled target. Eh, I don't think it's that great. Threadlings are not good, so I'm probably going to stay away from this one. Hail the Storm, finally a strong stasis perk. Shattering an encased target or stasis crystal will release shards of ice that will slow and damage surrounding enemies. This one is cool, finally a good stasis perk. We need more of this. Rays of Precision causes solar weapon precision final blows while radiant to ignite those enemies. Another very strong perk here. Solo Operative, back again, will mainly be a good one if you're looking to solo any content as you deal increased damage to all enemies while being the only one alive. And the final perk that I'm sure everyone will have equipped is Argent Ordnance, which will consume an armor charge when you fire a rocket, and it's going to grant increased damage and reload speed until you stow your rocket launcher, otherwise known as the ultimate perk for any rocket-based damage phase. So that is a pretty stacked artifact. I was really looking forward to a lot more stasis love in the artifact. This is, again, just very heavily focused on solar, which is kind of annoying. But at least we did get some stasis. Uh, but that's enough for the Queen's Foil Sensor artifact. Let's move on to some ability changes, and we've got a lot. The ability goals that they had in mind for Season 23 were to make sure that, obviously, everything's balanced. They also want to reduce insane survivability builds to better meet their threshold for what they consider like the most powerful that should be in the game. Well of Radiance and Ward of Dawn tuning. Oh boy. And finally, they are taking a pass at those stasis abilities, which we mentioned in the beginning. They're going to be going over some changes coming next season, as well as some other time in the future. Starting off with cooldown reductions, they specifically want to address what are supposed to be long cooldown abilities that basically have infinite uptime right now with some creative build crafting elements that you can do. It's very easy to pretty much get any ability back that you want almost instantly right now, so they're taking a big pass at this. The big takeaway here is that abilities with shorter cooldowns will not really be affected by build crafting, but abilities with longer cooldowns will receive less ability energy back for the build crafting setups that you might be using now. It's kind of confusing, just know that abilities with longer cooldowns will be tougher to get back, and they should kind of revert back to their intended cooldown times, even with the most crazy build setup that you can think of. This will be a big nerf to a lot of builds. We'll just have to test and see how bad though. Next up, we have got survivability nerfs. Bungie wants that aspirational content like Grandmaster Nightfalls, Master Raids, Master Dungeons, and so on to just be tougher. Right now, there are a few select builds that are so much more powerful than others that there's almost no comparison. Strand Titan is among the strongest builds in the game. It is the strongest, in my opinion. Just for survivability purposes, nothing really even comes close. Have I enjoyed my Titan builds this year? Absolutely. Is it time for a nerf? I don't know, maybe, but I don't want to get too far ahead of myself here, so these are the actual changes coming. Woven Mail is getting the first nerf from a 55% damage reduction down to a 45% damage reduction. It's not the biggest change, it will be kind of noticeable, but they might be tuning it even further at some point. Solar Restoration in both PvP and PvP, times 1 and times 2 are all getting nerfed. I'm going to put the numbers on screen now. Not life-changing nerfs again, but still noticeable. And lastly, Devour is also getting what's probably the most impactful nerf with the heal being reduced from that full heal or 200% HP to only 100% HP unless Feed the Void is active on your Warlock. Feed the Void will also provide additional benefit by granting more grenade energy than it used to per kill. And again, you will heal fully, but that's only on Warlock and you have to have that aspect equipped. All right, quick sidestep over to PvP, kind of a nerf here. Honestly, the right thing to do here, in my opinion. The slide, shoot, powered melee, one-shot kill is no longer going to be a thing you could do. It's impossible to avoid. I never do this, so I'm not going to notice anything different here. Also, Tempest Strike on Arc Hunter is getting a 25% damage buff, so nice to see a buff in there. But we are back to more nerfs, starting with Banner of War. We all knew something was coming at some point, but right now Bungie thinks it's too easy to build up Banner of War stacks, which, yeah, they're probably right. So they are increasing the amount of kills that we need to hit that times four cap. So it's not the worst nerf, and they did say that they don't want to remove its potency too much since it really does fit that Titan fantasy that they're trying to design. So it could have been worse for Banner of War, but we do have a bonk Titan nerf. This is definitely going to change the way that you play bonk. Titan. 
I'm surprised it took this long. It's been in the game forever, but here we go. Now that throwing hammer is going to be on a 1.4 second charge when you pick it up instead of it instantly charging, which basically allowed us to endlessly throw the hammer at bosses to stay alive and do tons of damage. That 1.4 seconds is going to feel like an eternity. If you're trying to deal damage to the boss, you're probably just going to die. So it's definitely going to change the way that you play that build. But they are increasing the projectile tracking strength by 20% to hopefully make hitting further away targets more doable. So I guess that's good. But overall, again, substantial nerf and just as some icing on the cake here soul invictus is also getting nerfed with sunspots now lasting only 12 seconds maximum instead of 20 seconds well of radiance is also getting a nerf with it moving up a tier in its cooldown category from 417 seconds up to 455 seconds i don't think this is going to affect things too much since it's still really easy to get your super back through build crafting despite some of the mod changes that we'll see here in a second but this is only the beginning they mentioned here that eventually they'll be taking another pass at both Ward of Dawn and Well of Radiance since they are kind of ruining the sandbox for what they want for certain activities. Largely Trials of Osiris. No idea what they're planning specifically, but just expect some nerfs to happen in the future. I think that's it for all the major ability nerfs here because it's time to talk about Stasis, which Bungie say is now three years old, which is crazy. It just hasn't seen enough tuning to keep up with all the other subclass changes that have happened over the years. Starting off with the fragment changes, here are some of the fragments that are getting their stat penalties either removed altogether or just altered to a different stat. I'm going to throw them on the screen now instead of reading them out loud. Try not to make this video 10 years long. So let's go over some hunter specific builds. Withering Blade is getting a few minor buffs, better tracking, more bounces, longer duration. It should just feel a little bit better when you're throwing it now. The Winter Shroud aspect, which will slow enemies when you dodge near them, that's also getting some buffs. More slow stacks, double the slow duration, and a bit of extra range. Behemoth Titans are also getting a couple buffs with the Shiver Strike melee ability now freezing enemy players. Glacial Quake, the super ability will now freeze enemy players on cast, which is kind of cool. But both of these actually used to be in the game when Stasis launched, but they were removed. So they're basically just adding back in what used to be in the game. Howl of the Storm, the Titan aspect, is getting a fix with it being more consistent in freezing combatants that are impacted by it. And finally, Warlocks, I agree with Bungie here that Shade Binders are pretty strong already. I have a build that I showed earlier this season, and yeah, it's great. But they still are going to be getting some buffs in some of the underutilized abilities. Frost Pulse is the first one. That's the aspect that will freeze enemies when you cast your Rift. The freeze is going to be more consistent in actually freezing those faster moving combatants. It's going to have a slightly bigger range as well from 8 meters to 8.5 meters. Penumbral Blast, the Warlock melee ability, will also be getting a larger blast radius from 1.5 meters to 2 meters. It's just going to make it a little bit easier to freeze enemies. It'll be a little bit more forgiving. And going to grenades, they're adjusting some cooldowns. The Glacier Grenade is going to be getting a reduction down to 121 seconds, which used to be 152 seconds. Cold Snap Grenades are also getting some quality of life improvements they're pretty specific overall they should just feel a little bit better that's all you need to know special weapons will also deal more damage to frozen enemies and stasis crystals 10 percent more damage instead of five percent so i feel like we're hardly going to notice this at all but hey it's still a buff and there's more stuff to look forward to at some point in the future they don't say when but a new stasis verb called frost armor no details on how it works yet but it sounds cool that will eventually be coming to the game we will also get another pass at aspect and fragment changes as well as a specific buff or change to all the harvesting aspects, which give us stasis crystals. <sighs> okay, so that is all the ability changes. Let's go over some exotic armor changes, and we're going to rapid fire these because there are a lot, and we'll start with hunters. Shards of Galanor now refunds super energy from getting throwing knife kills. Ophidia Spath will now also grant a throwing knife damage bonus for each throwing knife kill that you get, up to double damage for five seconds, and when you dodge, it's going to refund that timer. Stompies now now no longer requires you to have full dodge ability to get all the movement benefits. You're also now going to get better damage resistance while airborne, but you're going to lose out on some lateral movement bonuses. Mechaneer's Trick Sleeves, this says that the sidearm damage bonus now persists for 5 seconds after your shields begin to recharge, and sidearm kills will extend that damage bonus's duration by 3 seconds and completely reload your sidearm from reserves. Finally, the damage bonus has been reduced in PvP to compensate for it lasting longer. It's now going to be about 10% sidearm damage instead of 35%, so some buffs, some nerfs. The Bombardier 
Warriors now applies 20 slow stacks to Guardians and 40 slow stacks to PvE combatants while you're using Stasis. Nice. Triton Vice, recent exotic, is getting a huge Glaive damage buff while surrounded, up to 100% from 30%. Nice damage bonus there. Celestial Nighthawk will now also grant super energy for precision kills, up to 4.5%. And moving on to Titan now, Severance Enclosure will now provide larger explosions, and enemies killed by those explosions will trigger more explosions, so this sounds kind of fun. Peregrine Greaves are also seeing some changes. You're now going to have to actually be airborne for a brief time, not sure how long, before that exotic perk triggers. Also, damaging champions, tormentors, or mini bosses with a shoulder charge is going to deal further increased damage and it actually refunds your melee energy. Kind of cool. And for the Worm God Caress, the Burning Fist exotic effect is going to be just completely changed. It's now going to be a meter that's going to show up on your buff bar that increases with melee kills and finishers, and it's gonna decay over time. The meter is gonna be broken up into five sections, just like any other buff that shows up on the side of your screen. It's gonna provide an escalating melee and glaive damage bonus, and the upper end of the meter is also gonna give you a boosted weapon damage bonus, so that's kinda cool. As the meter decays, though, it's gonna pass back through the earlier tiers rather than deactivating immediately, so the meter decays more quickly the more full it is, obviously, because it's just really powerful at the top end. Ashen Wake, Fusion Grenade Impacts now stun Unstoppable Champions. And time for the Seasonal Syntheseps rework here. We got some changes coming. They're going to remove the melee lunge distance, but they're going to improve weapon handling and reload speed while surrounded, so that's like all the time as a Titan. We're also getting reduced melee damage bonus when surrounded down to 165% which used to be 200%, but they are doubling that Glaive melee bonus, yes, up to 100%, so finally a reason to use Glaives. Precious Scars. Kills with weapons matching your subclass now apply Restoration Tier 1 for 1.5 seconds in PvP and 3 seconds in PvE. And let's finish up with Warlock here, starting off with the Balladors Wraith Weavers. So this is another Frost Pulse buff. When you cast Frost Pulse, nearby allies gain Tier 2 Stasis Weapon Surge for 10 seconds in PvE and 5 seconds in PvP. They also gain a 50 HP Overshield. This is also going to provide benefit to your super ability. When you cast your super, all of your allies get Tier 4 Stasis Weapon Surge, and you get Tier 4 Stasis Surge when you end your super. Apotheosis Veil, casting your super now grants Cure Tier 3 for you and nearby allies, and after your super ends, you temporarily gain increased melee and grenade regen for 8 seconds. Felwinter's Helm, move the size of the weakening burst and duration of weaken up one tier against all targets, except for finishers against bosses which is going to retain a maximum size and duration. Karnstein Armlets. Melee kills now grant Cure Tier 3 and Restoration Tier 1 for 8 seconds. Finishers now grant Cure Tier 3 and Restoration Tier 2 for 8 seconds. Honestly, the changes so far have not been that exciting for me. All right, for the next one, it's all the Aeon armor that's available for all classes. I could make like a whole video on this probably, so I'm just going to put it on screen. You can read through it. They are completely reworking all of it and it's like extremely detailed just know that they're switching up what used to be kind of like a heavy ammo generating exotic now it's going to be something like just completely reworked so i'll put it on screen again you can read it right now so those are all the exotic changes let's move on to some armor mod changes now some nerfs some like buffs i think heavy-handed firepower reaper will all now have a 10 second cooldown instead of what i believe was five on providing orbs of power all the kickstart mods are getting changed as well they now grant between 16 and 45 percent grenade energy i think this ties in with some of those longer ability cooldowns that they're trying to prevent from us getting back too quickly i'll put the rest on screen here there's just been so much number reading that i'm sure that you don't want to hear anymore so you can just look on these these are some of the mods that are going to be seeing some more changes here here. And some exciting news here just to finish off the TWID, we have Fireteam Finder beta access that's going to start shortly after the season ends, and it's only going to contain raids to start off. This has been two years in the making, there's a lot that goes into this, so apparently it's just been really hard to get out. But I am curious to try this, hopefully this comes out fully before the end of the season, if not, it's got to come out by the final shape. Which, speaking of the final shape, we still don't have any concrete details on the delay. For all we know, it's still coming out on February 28th, so I'm just going to go with that because that's what Bungie has said. If they do address it, of course, I will talk about it in a video or something like that or in a community post. But this was a very long video. I did want to make it, though, because there are just so many important changes coming. Hopefully this was helpful to you. 
again, very excited to get back to the grind and just making a ton of videos starting next season. So please join the Discord, get ready for it, find some friends to play with, and I will see you all there or in the next video.